Hello everyone, Bridget here and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am doing a fun video. My friend, <laughs> my hand went up the frame. Today, we are doing a writing video. We are doing a video, <laughs> this is going well. We are doing a video where I am breaking down season 15 of Supernatural. <laughs> now, This one was interesting. I have never really done this kind of video before. We're gonna see how where it goes. Since I am kind of trying to figure out how people write TV shows and t TV show seasons, and being a fan of TV myself, I thought it'd be interesting to actually break down the formatting of this season. And personally, I found it, it felt weird to me. So everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Season 15 isn't my favorite. I thought it was kind of weird. I'll get into that in the whole video. But I thought it'd be cool to break it down. And let me know if you guys actually want me to do other ones of these for other seasons or other shows. I think it'd be really interesting just to like break down how they approached a season. So I'm going to be taking, um, okay, I have broken the season down into seven categories. They're chronological and I've given them all titles. So I will go over what happened in these episodes and kind of give an overview of what I think the writers are going for. Yeah, so we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna, we're gonna jump right in. So here's my breakdown of season 15. This does not, inc this, this does include some of my own opinions about the season. So just, just prefacing that. And of course, spoiler alert, duh. So let's go. So starting out, we have the season premiere and the first three episodes. So I am calling this first threat and goal. It's a pretty basic title. Um, so the first threat we had was the Fisher and all the spirits being released from hell. And yes, this is basically the aftermath from the season finale of season 14. So it kind of establishes Chuck's power and the threat that they're going to be facing in this season. Um, it also has character conflict, it has Rowena's death, and kind of sets up uh, where the brothers and Cass and Jack and all that, where they are, and it's hard for me to comprehend that Balfagor was only in there for three episodes. Just saying, he's only in this section. And so, yeah, it even has like, it's like this uh, little category has its own character. And we have Balfour for this one section. That is the first section, which seems to be like its own little tiny story arc, which is interesting. But anyway, moving into the next section, which is episodes four to seven, which I'm titling Life Goes On which is after the Destiel divorce and after Cass walks out and we have him solving cases by himself. We also have, in the later part of this section, we have Dean going to see his old friend. We have Eileen coming back. This section is good for character growth and certain exploration of the characters. Personally, I think it's kind of strange to have when you've had 15 years to build up these characters, but it's fine. It's totally valid. It's like, we need a little bit of time. We can't have them doing epic fighting God all the time, but having four episodes dedicated to that did seem like a little much to me, personally. That's all I'm saying. And yes, we have the return of Eileen. We have Sam's visions in this section and Chuck showing him 
all that could happen if he says no and the bullet and all that gets resolved in four to seven. Four to seven was kind of moving past the first conflict and then we have the break in between that and the next big conflict. Um, which leads me into the next section, which is only two episodes. It's episodes eight and nine, which I'm titling Back Into the Fray. And that has big characters returning and we have big plot points and just like, these two episodes were really like epic and I really loved how they did this. We had the return of Adam and Michael. We also had the purgatory storyline with the Dean and Cass. And these two episodes just really like vibed well for me. They're like two of my favorite episodes of the whole season. I would totally rewatch either of them. More so episode eight than nine personally, because I love Jake Abel's performance as Adam and Michael and I wish he didn't die. <laughs> But hey, <laughs> what can you do? It's supernatural, everyone dies. Moving into the next section, we have episodes 10 and 11. For me, these seemed very strange. Now, these were the comedy episodes, and I'm calling this section Momentary Hurdle. This is when we have Hero's Journey and the, is it called the Gamblers or something? It's Pool Gods. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This whole storyline really confused me because they gave us this impression of Chuck could take away their, like, the Hero's advantages, but they were never very clear on what that meant because the concept was interesting, but it more or less just made Sam and Dean empty vessels that Chuck made heroes, which makes us have the impression that Sam and Dean wouldn't like have this motivation if they hadn't been controlled by Chuck. I don't know. This whole storyline really got me confused and it was strange that it got wrapped up so fast. It was literally just like two episodes and then it was gone. I don't know. It, <laughs> it seemed very like monster of the week for two episodes. It's like, was this really necessary is my question. I mean, it was funny, but was it necessary writing wise? I don't know. Did they just need two more episodes? Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> This moves on to episodes 12 and 13. And this section I am calling Build the Stakes. This section brings back Anael, who is played by Daniil, Jensen's wife, and Ruby, played by Genevieve, who is Jared's wife. <laughs> um, it also, the episode, that was all in episode 13. And the previous episode, we actually got Kaya and we had Jody and we had amazing dynamic between Cass and Jody and you can watch my reaction video to that because I squealed. That episode was beautiful and I'm such a happy little Kim and Misha stan for that episode. I feel well fed. Thank you. We really had in these two episodes the the building, of, like I said, the building of the stakes. We had them trying to find the occultum and it really felt like we were thrown back into the mission, the mission of taking down Chuck. And we did have in episode 12, kind of a veering off of that mission with them going to rescue Kaya, but it also made sense because <laughs> Dark Kaya was kind of a loose end, so they needed to tie that up. It wasn't like the hero's journey where it was just kind of thrown in there, so I could see it as being valid. It was, we need to <laughs> tie up the Wayward Sisters plotline, so let's bring back Dark Kaya and get her back to where she like originally was, and let's bring back our Kaya. And having that solace 
with Kaya and knowing that she was gonna be with Claire and Jody and all the other girls is just mwah, beautiful. And then in episode 13, we get thrown right back into the quest for Chuck and knowing that Jack is gonna take him down. And yeah, I feel like that kind of got the momentum going and really set the pace well. And then we had 14 to 16. <laughs> I know that this was like, like 14 premiered after they came back. Like they aired 14 in October and they had stopped airing in March or something. But coming back with the holiday episode was an odd way to go. To, like even writing wise, like not even to do with the airing, I felt like it was an odd way to go. Like we're going to have Jack like crying at the very end of the last episode and then we're going to go into a kind of filler episode and not really address it as much. I mean, they did address it, but I don't know. It's <laughs> Personally, I'm not a fan of the Monster of the Week episodes. I'm a much bigger fan of the mythology episodes and just ones that build the suspense and the plot. And yeah, Last Holiday just didn't didn't do it for me. It was kind of weird. And coming back to the show after like months to that, just meh. It was, it was fine. And after that, we had, um, ah, uh, yes, we had another Monster of the Week episode with flashbacks of Sam and Dean. And we also had Amara coming back and all that good stuff. I can't fully remember what happened in like 15 and 16 or, or six, like 15, I believe was the flashback episode, but then 16, I can't quite remember what happened. So <laughs> anyway, in, and lastly, we have episodes 17 to 20, and this is Final Stakes and Fallout. And in this, we have the infamous snap from Chuck, where everybody goes dusty. Everyone does the, I don't feel so good. <laughs> it's like, ah, not again, they're stealing this. Yeah, we had 18, where it was the Destiel confession, and we had yeah, 17, where Chuck and Amara became one, whatever the fuck that means. And all the revelations to do with the empty and just became very fast paced and like, let's go, let's wrap it up. And 19, where Chuck gets defeated and the infamous episode that we're not gonna speak of. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Personally, as I was breaking down the season, I really like decided that they could have done this season in 14 episodes and I feel like it would have had better pacing. I'm personally not sure what they were going for with the pacing of this season because I saw it as they were jumping a lot out of like in and out of the main plot line. I don't know, there are certain episodes in season 15 that really confuse me. And as a writer, I just go, why? Why Why did we need this? And it does make me question like if they hadn't switched from 23 episodes to 20, like what would the other three episodes be? Would they just be more like Monster of the Week episodes? Would they have just thrown those in? I will never know and I hope I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that is everything I have to say about season 15 unless I start ranting, which I could and I don't want to because <laughs> this is just becoming my opinions on season 15. So yeah, 
that's all I'm going to say for now. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do other ones for other seasons. And let me know what you thought of season 15. Feel free to disagree with me if you loved it. I would love to hear why and just have a conversation. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I will catch you all on Friday with another video. Bye. Ha.